dear students hope you all are fine and doing well in your studies so in my previous video we have already started with our fourth chapter of civics that is parliamentary government the union legislature so i told you about the federal structure of government that in india the power is divided into on the state level as well as at the central level government and this division of power in state and the central level of government it is called federal structure of government after that i told you that in india we are having parliamentary form of government that means the parliamentary form of government where prime minister is the real head and the president is the nominal head of the government and after that i told you that the whole parliament indian uh, central government legislature it we call it parliament okay and this parliament is the highest law making body of the country okay and after that i told you that parliament consists of president as well as two houses of parliament and these two houses are lok sabha and rajya sabha and after that i started telling you about lok sabha i told you the three important points of lok sabha and after that i told you about that the person who wants to contest the election the conditions that he has to fulfill if he wants to contest the election so these till there we have already completed in our previous video so today we will start with our next topic and the next topic is elections elections of lok sabha so this is our next topic so elections of lok sabha so first of all the elections of lok sabha are held once every 5 years what i said these elections to the lok sabha are held once every 5 years but during the time when the president dissolves the lok sabha before the completion of its term so in such conditions the elections can be even held before completion of these 5 years as well as when during the time of emergency during those situation when the term of the lok sabha extended by 1 year so in that cases the elections can be postponed so the important point is in normal conditions the election of lok sabha election to lok sabha it held once every 5 years and i have given i have told you about two exceptions here now the second point here is the country is divided into constituency so for the purpose of this election the whole country is divided into constituencies and the number of constituencies are equal to the number of seats in lok sabha that means there are as many uh, constituencies as many seats are available in lok sabha and these constituencies the, uh, the constituencies are created on the basis of the population of the state means the states which are having more population are having more constituencies whereas the states are having less population are having less constituencies so we can take one example here the example like uttar pradesh in our country in india uttar pradesh is one of the most populous state okay as it is one of the most populous state that's why the number of constituencies in uttar pradesh are more whereas the states like goa and mizoram so these are the states where the population is less as the population is less that's why the constituencies there are also less so the next point is every constituency elects one representative to lok sabha so as we know that the number of constituencies are equal to the number of seats of lok sabha so therefore from each constituency 
वन पर्सन वन कैंडिडेट इज इलेक्टेड एज द मेंबर ऑफ लोकसभा एज द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ दैट कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी एंड दिस रिप्रेजेंटेटिव इज इलेक्टेड बाय द पीपल ऑफ दैट कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी सो हेयर हु बिकम द इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव द कैंडिडेट हु गेट्स द लार्जेस्ट नंबर ऑफ वोट्स बिकम्स द इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव सो from the constituency there are many people who contest the election there are many candidates who belong to different parties they contest the election so the person or the candidate who won who get the largest number of votes he is declared as the winner and he become the elected representative of that particular constituency so this candidate it may belong to any political party so the candidate who won the election it may belong to any political party or it may be an independent candidate so what is independent candidate means the person who does not belong to any party who contests the election independently okay so as i told you that the person the candidate who gets the largest number of vote is uh, declared as the elected member of elected representative of lok sabha so now who vote for these candidates okay so all indian citizens aged 18 years and above these all citizens are having the right to choose their representative through the process of election these indian citizens they vote for the candidates okay and these election procedure in the election procedure the voting is done by secret ballot so that only the voter knows the which candidate he or she has voted for and these candidate after the election after the voting procedure so the these votes are counted by the election commission so election after when the counting is over and after that election commission declares the person the candidate who gets the maximum votes it declares that candidate as the winner and the elected representative from that particular constituency and the important thing is here that the voters these voters they can vote only for one time okay in one election they can vote only for one time and second thing they can vote only to those candidates those candidates those who have stand for the election from their constituencies that means they cannot it's not like that they will they can go to the other constituencies and can vote there also they have to vote in their constituencies only to the candidates who stand from their constituency so after the result of each constituency is declared that means the result of all 545 seats of the lok sabha is declared and the after that president president he invites the party to form the government that wins the majority of seats in lok sabha that means the party who wins the election from the maximum number of constituencies of india so now the president he invites that party to come and form the government so this is the whole procedure of forming the government so in some cases it happens that no party gets the majority in lok sabha during the time of election so in such cases when no party Uh, is able to get the maximum number of vote or is able to uh, prove the majority there in lok sabha in such cases two or more parties they can come together and can form the government together so this type of government where two or more parties together form the government is called coalition government so the party who wins the clear majority is can form the government but in case if any if no party wins the clear majority in such cases if the parties 
if they want they can form a coalition government by joining two or by, by two or more parties coming together and forming the government so after the election is over and the majority party forms the government so after that all the members elected members of lok sabha they start their sessions their meetings of lok sabha and these meetings of lok sabha are called as the sessions of lok sabha so for the purpose of these sessions of lok sabha one presiding officer is required and the presiding officer of lok sabha is known as speaker we call the presiding officer of lok sabha as the speaker of lok sabha so this speaker of lok sabha all the members of the parliament of sorry lok sabha all the members elected members of lok sabha from among themselves they elect one member as the speaker of lok sabha so generally this one member or speaker of lok sabha it belongs to the ruling party but after becoming the speaker the he or she has to act impartially okay and now the functions of speaker so the functions of speaker so the first function of speaker is that he conducts the he or she conducts the proceedings of the house proceedings means the meetings of the house and the second important function of the speaker is to maintains order and discipline within the house so it's the third for, uh, function of the speaker is that sometimes it happens that on some matters or some issues there are the debates in the parliament so after these debates now the speaker takes vote on that issues okay so then speaker takes the vote on issue so after the vote sometimes it happens that the votes in favor of the issue or against the issue are equal that means there is a tie between the votes so in such cases speaker has the right to cast or has the right to exercise a casting vote okay so he has this right also that he can exercise a casting vote so these all are the functions of speaker i think this is enough for today and i have told you about lok sabha the lok sabha uh, about the lo about lok sabha now this is over the topic is over and from next video we'll start with rajya sabha so thank you and have a nice day